Hi, and welcome to British Girl Bakes. I'm going to show you how to make this realistic stack of poker chips out of cake. The first step is to build the cake. I'm taping a 6 inch cake board to my turntable to work on, and taping a 4 inch cake board to that. I'm using 4 inch cake layers, securing the first layer to the 4 inch board with a dollop of buttercream frosting. I'm dividing this layer in half horizontally to make two cake layers, and I'm drizzling the cake with simple syrup to keep it moist. This step is optional. I'm spreading a layer of frosting onto the cake, this is peanut butter buttercream, and then putting the next layer of cake on top. Another layer of frosting, more cake, and that'll be my first cake ready. I'm going to use two cakes for this, but you could use three or four if you want it to be taller. You could also make this design with just one cake. Make it as simple or as complicated as you feel comfortable with. I'm using my perfect chocolate cake and my 4 minute buttercream frosting. The links for the tutorials and the recipes are in the description box below. For my second cake I'm doing exactly the same, layering cake and frosting to build another 4 inch cake. Each cake should be on its own cake board the same size as the cake, so I have two cake boards, both 4 inches wide, for my two cakes which are also 4 inches wide. I'm intentionally making the heights of my cakes different, so the stack of poker chips looks more random and realistic. So this one has two layers of cake, but the other one had three layers. Keep each cake under six inches tall for stability. Now I'm giving each cake a crumb coat, just a thin layer of frosting to trap any crumbs that come off the cake. This is easiest when the cakes are chilled, because they get less crumbly when they're cold. I've let the crumb coat set for about 30 minutes in the fridge before applying my final coat of frosting. This will be a thicker layer of frosting than the crumb coat. I'm using an offset spatula to apply the frosting and a bench scraper to smooth it out, and then smoothing the top with my offset spatula. Next I need to mark the grooves in between the poker chips on the stack. I want the height to width ratio to be the same for my cake as the real life poker chips, so I'm measuring how many poker chips fit widthwise, and it's 12. So a chip is 12 times as wide as it is high. My cake is 4 inches wide, so the height of each cake poker chip will be 1 12th of that, which is a third of an inch. I have a cake comb with grooves about a third of an inch apart, so I'm going to use that. I've chilled my cakes before using the cake comb because I only want to indent lines around the frosting, not create a wavy zigzag texture, and cold hard frosting will hold its shape even if I push a bit too hard with my cake comb, so I'll get the lines between the chips but the frosting will stay straight upright. I'm doing this for both of my cakes. I'm going around a few times with the cake comb, this one's by Wilton, and as it's creating the lines it's pulling off strands of frosting that look like spaghetti. This is another reason to chill the cake. You can tidy up the sides if there are any rough parts of straggling frosting, because if you wipe it with a spatula it won't damage the rest of the frosting on the cake because the frosting has set. I've printed out an image of a poker chip the same size as my cake, and I'm cutting that out to use as a guide for the details. With dark blue fondant rolled out as thin as possible, I'm cutting strips to go down the sides of the chips. I'm matching the width of the blue strips on the printout, and just eyeballing it as I trim the strips with a pizza cutter. You could measure them and mark them out with a ruler, or use a fondant cutter, if you want to be more precise. I'm brushing a tiny bit of water onto the back of the fondant to help it stick to the cake since the frosting has set and isn't sticky anymore. Don't use too much water or the colour of the fondant will stain the frosting. I'm cutting the fondant at the base of the cake and pressing it gently against the cake, adjusting the placement slightly using the side of my knife blade. I'm not worrying about the placement on top of the cake yet, I'll do that when all of the strips are attached. Using the printout as a guide for spacing, I'm applying the rest of the strips around the cake. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please click the thumbs up button. Subscribe to my channel, British Girl Bakes, for new cake decorating tutorials every week. I'm using a round cookie cutter to indent a ring in the middle of the top poker chip. To shape the ends of the strips, I don't have a cookie cutter quite big enough, so I'm freehanding it, using the curve of this cutter to trim each strip one by one. My frosting is getting sticky as the cake warms up outside the fridge, so I'm chilling it again to set the frosting before I continue. Now that the frosting is cold and hard, I can trim the fondant without damaging the smooth frosting. 
so I'm taking away the extra pieces of fondant and then using my knife to wipe off any blue stains. If I hadn't wet the top part of the strip of fondant with my paintbrush, these stains wouldn't be here, so now I know for next time. But if you do get stains, you can see how easy it is to scrape them off your frosting if it's cold. I'm making this ring indent more obvious by pushing the cookie cutter in deeper and wiggling it around a bit, and I'm spinning it as I pull it up off the cake so it doesn't bring any frosting with it. This is a slightly smaller cookie cutter for the inner ring. Now I'm going to indent the strips around the side to mark out where each poker chip is. I'm just using the back of my knife blade for this because it's thin but not too sharp. The fondant has adhered nicely to the cold cake, so it won't move around while I'm indenting it. For the little lines in the ring in the middle of the chip, I'm rolling out more blue fondant and cutting it with the same two cookie cutters that I used on top of the cake. This will give the lines the right shaped curve. Then I'm cutting them in half, and in half again and again and again to make eight sections. And then I'm removing the middle and trimming the little strips into three parts each. This makes 24 little lines, which is the number of blue strips and white spaces in between. So it makes the strips the right size, but I'll only need half of them, so I can choose the 12 most perfect strips to place in the ring I made on the cake. This is going to be my top cake, so I'll be putting on all of the details of the poker chip on top. For any cakes beneath it, if they're only slightly offset, you won't need these details because you won't be able to see them. For the dice around the chip, I'm going to need 21 little dots. I'm using a piping tip with a little round hole to cut out the dots, using the end of a paintbrush to push the dots out of the hole in the piping tip. The dice are outlined with indents, so I'm cutting out one from my printout as a guide and then indenting around it on the cake using a toothpick. If you have a small square cutter, that could work perfectly and save you some time. The frosting has softened up quite a bit while I've been adding these details, so I can press the dots straight onto the cake and they'll stick. I don't have to brush them with water. Notice that the dice don't go in order around the cake, not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They go 1, 3, 2, 6, 4, 5. And the top of the cake is finished. My cakes are so small that I don't need a support structure, but if your cake is more than 6 inches tall, or if you're going to stack them more than about a centimetre offset, you'll need to use dowels or boba straws to support the second cake. Okay, my cakes are finished, and now I can stack them. I'm putting the top one a little to the side, and lining up the blue strips on the side so that they aren't directly above each other, so it looks more realistic. Touching up the frosting at the bottom of the top cake, and ta-da! Thanks for watching! Subscribe to my channel for new cake decorating tutorials every week.